You are Locked On Patriots, your daily New England Patriots podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, Jets fans and Patriots fans. It's that time of week. It's that time of year. Jets and Patriots will play this Sunday, 1 o'clock, MetLife Stadium. I'm John Butchko with Locked On Jets, along with Mike DeBate from Locked On Patriots. It's one of our favorite shows each year, our crossover episode of Locked On Jets and Locked On Patriots to prepare you for this AFC East battle. And you should know that this crossover Thursday episode is brought to you by Prize Picks, the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL and use code all lowercase locked on NFL for a first deposit for a first deposit match of up to one hundred dollars. Well, Mike, it's always great to talk with you. Our teams have a fierce rivalry. There's a fierce rivalry in the fan base is. But I feel like it's always a friendly discussion when we talk Jets and Patriots. It definitely is, John. It always feels very homey whenever the two of us hit the microphone together. Two fan bases that definitely have interesting relationships with each other. Two teams that have interesting histories with each other. But bottom line, a lot of mutual respect between these two franchises. And I still think we're looking forward to a great game this Sunday in the Meadowlands. All right. Well, Mike, Jets 1-1, one and one, Patriots 0-2. Oh I think both these teams are in need of a win. What's the biggest storyline coming out of Foxborough this week? Well, right now, out of Foxborough, it's missed opportunities and early deficits continuing to plague these New England Patriots in their efforts to get back into the win column. Mac Jones especially, a lot of blame being placed on his shoulders, finished Sunday's game against the Dolphins, 31 of 42 passing, 231 yards, one touchdown, one interception. Um, You know, typically an adequate stat line, not anything blockbuster, but not anything bottom of the barrel either, but... There were a handful of ill-timed throws, a little bit of an inability on behalf of the entire team to make the necessary plays in the clutch. And this is something that is very atypical of a Bill Belichick-led team, especially a Bill O'Brien-led offense. So a lot of blame pie being thrown around right now, but you can't in good conscience lay this all on Mac Jones' shoulders. you got to take a look at the makeshift offensive line behind which he's been playing the last few weeks. Um, unfortunately, Cole Strange, Michael Wainu making their season debuts last week. They're still getting their legs back, literally and figuratively. Wainu is coming back from an ankle injury. Strange coming back from a knee injury. Uh, that unit struggled uh, without any question. Miami's defense finishing the night with four sacks on Mac Jones, eight quarterback hits. Calvin Anderson especially is working his way back from non-football illness. He was credited allowing a sack on Jones while surrendering three quarterback hits. Patriots have to figure out a way to protect Mac better, and that's going to allow the running game to get on track, which hasn't happened for New England. So the offensive improvements that we're seeing in New England are logistical right now, but they haven't translated into a whole lot of points on the board, and that's making some Patriots fans pretty squeamish. Now, you mentioned logistical changes, and I've been fascinated by the return of Bill O'Brien to New England because, of course, last year replacing Josh McDaniel, the Patriots had that two-headed monster, so to speak, of Matt Patricia (laughs) and Joe Judge. And I understand that was not a popular duo up in New England as the Patriots (laughs) struggled struggled a bit. Um, What difference do you think Bill O'Brien's made in his his return to the Patriots? Well, you're seeing a more balanced, a more disciplined New England Patriots team without any question. Fundamentally, this team is much more sound. Mac Jones is playing much better under pressure. He's completing 72% of his passes under pressure. He's ranking right now amongst the top quarterbacks in the league in terms of completions and in terms of attempts. So they're definitely putting the ball back in his hands. Mac has more control at the line of scrimmage. And because of it, it give, it's giving him a little bit more freedom over this offense than he had last year, where really at times, John, it looked like he was playing with handcuffs on. Uh, the Patriots were not able to really get their offense into rhythm simply because they were so bogged down with trying to worry about game plan that they didn't worry about executing it on the field. Bill O'Brien has made a world of difference for the New England Patriots in that regard. Again, it's digging themselves early holes, turnovers, protection of the football has been key. Patriots turning the ball over very early in the first two games, and it's leading to a lot of points on the board for their opponents. So they have to shore that up if they want to be competitive in this game that we're talking about today. 
But ultimately, Bill O'Brien has made a difference in terms of catering to the strengths of his pass catchers and especially his quarterback. Mike, you know, I hear you talk about a polarizing third year quarterback who was drafted in the first round of 2021. I hear you talk about a makeshift offensive line. We might as well be talking about the New York Jets right now. And I was just going to say, John, uh, please enlighten me as to what the biggest story right now is in Gotham City. Here we need to ask. Well, I think, you know, it's obviously all derivative on how do the Jets recover from the Aaron Rodgers injury. It mm. was about as devastating of an injury as you can see a team suffer. And Mike, Absolutely. before we started recording, I told you, you know, I think Patriots fans who were around in the pre-Bill Parcells days maybe get it. I think folks in Boston, Red Sox fans pre-2004 get it. I think there are fan bases across the NFL like Detroit and Cleveland that may get it. But it's just different when you suffer an injury like that and you have a team with the history of everything always seeming to fall apart at the wrong time. You know, it's one thing if I think it's one thing if your team's won a championship recently. It's one thing if your team's consistently in the mix. It, it, It hurts no matter what. But when you're in a situation like the Jets are, where you just feel like nothing can ever go right, it's been decades, it's, it's been 54 years since your team won a championship. Mm-hmm. Most most Jets fans have not seen their team win the Super Bowl. And you have this sense, the, the sense of optimism through the offseason that maybe we finally found our guy, maybe this is all going to work. And then Rodgers goes down four plays into the season. I mean, I've mentioned to some locked on Jets over the last couple of weeks. If you were, If you hired a Hollywood writer to come up with the most cursed team in sports, and you and he gave you that script, you wouldn't just reject it. You'd fire him because of how lazy it was. The four four <laughs> plays into the season, your guy gets injured. So now Zach Wilson's back in the lineup. And this is the quarterback mm-hmm. the Jets benched twice last year. And they got Aaron Rodgers to replace Zach Wilson. And the offensive line, which was a makeshift unit, they, they, lot, they rolled the dice on a lot of guys. Dwayne Brown, who's mm-hmm. 38 years old, they gambled they could get another good season out of him coming off injury. Makai Becton coming off essentially two full missed seasons because of injuries. It's not worked that well for the offensive line so far. And the Jets Mm -hmm. had a really bad performance against Dallas after a really inspiring victory after Rodgers got injured at week one against Buffalo. But a lot of the good feeling I think is now gone after that week one game because they went out and got crushed by Dallas and the Cowboys are playing excellent football right now. There's no question about that. I don't think there's any shame in losing to Dallas, but the way the Jets lost, I think opens up a lot of questions about, this team, especially the offensive line. Now, I think on the positive side, and it, you can't tell this through, through the stat sheet because the stats look terrible, but I actually do think Zach Wilson's making some progress. I mean, I mm-hmm. you know, he threw three interceptions, but those were all in the fourth quarter after the game was well in hand for Dallas. And I think for at least two of them, it was just him trying to do too much, him trying to make a play, you know, desperation situation. Um, I'm not saying it's there for Zach Wilson yet. And listen, when I say Zach Wilson's improved, improvement is relative. It's not that hard to be better than what Zach Wilson was last year. Mm -hmm. And I'm not convinced he's a quality starting quarterback at this point in time. But if you look at the way he's playing, he's making better reads. He's navigating the pocket better. I mean, last year, if there was the first sign of pressure, he was going to bail on it. He was going to backpedal. He's not doing these things this year. So there's at least, you know, some glimmer of hope. But it's always one game away from falling apart, and he's going up against the Patriots team that has really given him some issues over the last two seasons. So I think part of the story is, you know, part of the story is Zach Wilson. Part of the story is how will the offensive line impact him? And broad in a broader sense, Jets really need to get this win. They may be one and one, but the rest of the schedule, at least over the next couple of weeks, is going to be pretty tough. You got Kansas City coming into town next week, the Eagles over the horizon in a few weeks. And it's not that hard to see this thing going really downhill for the Jets if they don't get this victory to go 2-1 and one this weekend. I'm glad that you mentioned Zach Wilson and the pressure that he's under because I talked a little bit about pressure on Mac Jones. And obviously, you don't want to see your quarterback under extreme pressure. Mac's been a little bit better, but he's averaging just north of two seconds of time to get the ball out when the defenders are closing in around him. How do you believe in this game he's going to be able to handle some of that pressure that you know Bill Belichick is going to be throwing at him. You know, he's moving in the pocket better. And in the two minute drill against Dallas, he dealt with pressure a couple of times and he, he stepped up and he scrambled. So, you know, and like I said, last year, if last year, if there was a hint of pressure, the play was over Mm -hmm. this year, I think he's more calm in the pocket. And maybe this is the Aaron Rodgers effect because there was a lot made out of Aaron Rodgers mentoring him and, I do think the mentor thing gets a little out of hand sometimes 
Mm-hmm. I think the Jets were selling it because it's it's one of those things you could say, well, Aaron Rodgers, we're not just getting him for two years. He's also going to help Zach Wilson become a really good quarterback. But I think this is going to be a really interesting test. I do think Zach Wilson's handling pressure much better this year. And I think that, you know, you just see he's more comfortable moving within the pocket. And he's also more willing to just, just tuck in and run. And, you know, he's I'm not going to make him out to be Lamar Jackson, but, you know, he he can – if there's a if there's a lane in front of him, you know he can break a nice nice gain. So I think this could be a bigger test, though. I think it's going to be more interesting. I think it's going to be interesting to see how he handles it because I think Bill Belichick's a bit of a different test from what he's seen so far. Absolutely, and Bill Belichick defensively going up against Zach Wilson is a matchup. I'm sure both sides are going to be looking forward to seeing. But John, you and I both know these games come down to matchups. We can talk all about strategy, but it's the players on the field that ultimately decide the fate. John and I are going to talk about those matchups in just a moment and key players on which both sides want to keep eyes on when this episode of the Locked On Patriots and Locked On Jets podcasts continue right here on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Locked On listeners, football season is here and there is no better time to use Prize Picks, the largest independently owned daily fantasy sports platform in North America. They're the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. It's just you against the numbers. Instead of battling thousands of other players, including all those pros and sharks out there, you pick more than or less than on a two to six player stat projection and just watch the winnings roll in. Prize picks is really simple to play. You just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projected stats, and you place your entry. That's it. I can make my picks, John can make his picks, and submit their our entries in less than 60 seconds. That's why they're my favorite, and I know, folks, they're going to be yours, too. Price Picks also offers weekly promotions that can lead to big payouts like Taco Tuesday. Each Tuesday, Price Picks discounts selected player projections up to 25% to provide even more value. So don't delay. Do it today. Go to pricepicks.com slash LockedOnNFL and use the promo code LockedOnNFL for a first deposit match up to $100. That's a first deposit match up to $100 by going to prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL and use the code locked on NFL. Prize picks, daily fantasy sports made easy. Locked on listeners, everyone should be empowered to care for themselves and their loved ones during the unexpected. That's why Jace Medical offers the Jace case. The Jace case provides five life-saving antibiotics for emergency use, and it gives you peace of mind so that you are not just hoping that you have access to medication in an emergency. Jace Medical makes sure you have the medication in hand. They are simple. They handle everything from the online evaluation to licensed pharmacy medication delivery and ongoing consultation and care. Don't get caught unprepared. Save more than $360 by getting these life-saving antibiotics with Jace Medical, plus an additional $20 off by using the code LOCKEDON at checkout on jacemedical.com. So that is J-A-S-E medical.com, promo code LOCKEDON. Locked On Jets fans, Locked On Patriots fans, welcome to this Locked On crossover Thursday episode of the pods. John Butchko, host of Locked On Jets, Mike DeBate, host of Locked On Patriots, crossing the streams as we do twice every NFL season, and we're already having a blast here on this one, talking about the biggest stories coming out of both New England and New York, but as we said coming into the break, these games always come down to matchups on the field, and this game obviously has a lot of them to choose from. When you look at the Patriots and the Jets in week three of the 2023 NFL season, what matchups on the field are you looking forward to most? You know, Mike, I got to go back to something I alluded to in the first segment. This Jets offensive line did not play a good game against Dallas. I don't think they played a great game against Buffalo, but against Dallas, I think all five Jets linemen had a bad game. I don't think there was a single guy on that line that played well. And there's a lot of talk in New York, especially at the left tackle position with Dwayne Brown. This was a roll of the dice going with him this season. He was coming off a serious injury. And I, I want to emphasize, I have a lot of respect for Dwayne Brown, perennial pro bowler in Houston and Seattle. Guy who's had a phenomenal career. Played or injured with the Jets last season. He, he did not have to play. At the time he signed with the Jets, you have to remember, the Jets were a team that's been at the bottom of the league for a number of years. There was no sign that they were necessarily going to improve. 
he kind of took a leap of faith and signed with the Jets, Jets and played hurt last year and gave the Jets credible football mm. after Mekhi Becton got injured. So I have a lot of respect for Dwayne Brown. I don't know how much Dwayne Brown has left in the tank. He had limited snaps in training camp this year, did not play at all in the preseason. And uh, listen, Micah Parsons is a guy who gives everybody problems. In fact, he gave other Jets linemen a lot of problems, but that mm -hmm. was a dominant <laughs> performance. And I worry about Dwayne Brown, but I also worry about Mekhi Becton because Mekhi Becton did not play well last week. And I look right. at the Patriots, the guys they have who are going to come off the edge, Matthew Judon, Josh Uche. These are guys who have both given the Jets a lot of problems the last couple of years, especially last year. Jets had issues blocking them. And I did say I think Zach Wilson will handle pressure better than he did last year. But look, you don't want your quarterback to be under pressure because bad things will happen. Bad things happen for the Jets against Dallas, even though it wasn't it, what I'm saying is it wasn't Zach Wilson's fault. I think Zach Wilson dealt with the pressure relatively well. But if you're dealing with constant pressure, you're going to have issues. You know, you're going to take sacks. The quarterback's going to be less effective. I don't care who it is. And I have concerns over the way the Jets are going to be able to handle it. If Nathaniel Hackett, offensive coordinator, a guy who's catching a lot of criticism in New York because he left Dwayne Brown one on one against Parsons an awful lot and he hasn't shown much willingness to use his tight ends to block to you know have guys chip he really did not give the i mean he gave it there were times where he did it but i don't think he did it enough mm -hmm. and i'm concerned about is hackett gonna remain stubborn i'm worried about this matchup from for the from the jet standpoint yeah without any question and i'm glad that you brought that up and i got a funny feeling we're gonna circle back to that in just a moment when we talk about key players on whom we're gonna have our eye on but when it comes to matchups one that i am really looking forward to watching is Jets receiver Garrett Wilson, who I happen to think is one of the most electrifying offensive players in the league right now, going up against one of the better young corners in this rookie class, and that is Christian Gonzalez. And I do believe that Christian's going to draw that coverage this week, especially with Jonathan Jones still coming back from an ankle injury. He did practice on Wednesday. Good sign, but you have to think that he's going to be somewhat hampered by that injury moving forward. Marcus Jones, a speedy corner, second year, Created a lot of buzz last year with his ability to return punts. I know Jets fans know that very, very well, and his ability to be able to do that. Uh, he's nursing a shoulder injury, and it's looking iffy that he might be able to go in this one. So it ends up on the rookie's shoulders. And so far, Christian has proven that he's capable of handling the load. 13 tackles through his first two games. He had an interception, his first career interception against Miami. A corner blitz sack on Jalen Hurts in game one. Christian has done a little bit of everything. If he draws that coverage and is able to match up against Garrett Wilson, I'm looking forward to seeing how this kid handles a top-flight receiver one-on-one -on -one going up against, I think, in a very hostile environment. This could be a lot of fun to watch on Sunday, John. Oh, I, absolutely. I, I've been, I've been, I've watched New England a couple for both both games, and I think he's done it for I think he's been looked excellent. So I think that's an excellent matchup. And you mentioned a Garrett Wilson. I mean he would have put up a monster game against Dallas if the Jets just could have protected Zach Wilson a little bit better. I mean, there was a right. play near the end of the half where Jets are essentially in the mode where they have to throw to the end zone. They're out of timeouts. They're, you know, they're driving near the end of the half. So, you know, they're probably kicking a field goal, but they have to take a couple shots at the end zone. That's a situation where you can't get open in at the goal line. And Garrett Wilson still found a way to shake a defender and get open. I mean, there were a couple other plays uh, where Wilson, you could see if you wouldn't, we watch the film, the guilt Wilson was wide open and it wasn't Zach Wilson's fault. It was just the Jets could not protect him. And, you know, this, I think that this is going to be – I'm with you, Mike. I think that's going to be a great matchup. Obviously, we've talked about the quarterbacks. Obviously, we've talked about some of the high-profile players in the secondary and on the skill positions. But is there a particular player, John, that you think could swing the pendulum either way in this matchup between the Pats and Jets on Sunday? All right, I'm going to cheat here because this is the most obvious one ever. This is generic football analysis. I'm going to go to the quarterback and Zach Wilson. And the reason I'm doing this is Zach Wilson has had three nightmares, really four nightmares against New England, because I was going to say he's had three terrible games. And the one game that wasn't terrible was the game he got injured two years ago in Foxborough. So it has been a really difficult experience for Zach Wilson going up against a Patriots defense. But, you know, here's the thing. We all know Bill Belichick is the, about the last coach any young quarterback wants to see. But when you look at Zach Wilson's struggles, it's really about him just making unforced errors. I mean, I don't think that – and I, I look, I watched Bill Belichick destroy Sam Darnold. Yeah, I mean, in you know, there's the famous ghost game on Monday night back in 2019 <laughs> where you watched the film and you said, wow, I don't know how any young quarterback could figure out that scheme. Right. With Zach Wilson, I mean, these games against New England, he's just made big errors. And I think it's fair mm -hmm. to say that 
Wilson in the th- you know, the three games he's played start to finish, Jets have been 0 and three. I think that if you flip switch Zach Wilson and Mac Jones in all three of those games, the Jets may have gone three and oh. Zach Wilson has just is it was his first home game week two in 2021. He goes out and throws four interceptions. And again, I'll give credit for the, the guys who made the plays, but I don't think the Patriots necessarily did a lot schematically that forced those interceptions. I think Zach Wilson just you know, kind of threw the ball away. And it's the same goes last year at home when he threw three interceptions. And then the nightmare game in Foxborough that led to the infamous press conference quote, you know, did you let the defense down? No, which led to his benching. It's been a nightmare for Zach Wilson. So a chance for him to gain some measure of measure, measure of uh, redemption this Sunday, or perhaps, you know, another step towards disappointment. Mike, who do you have as your key player to watch in this one? You know, I almost cheated myself and went with Zach Wilson simply because I think that the key to New England being able to control this Jets team, either offensively or defensively, rests on how many mistakes the quarterback makes, if any. And you look at the track record, 54 of 106 pass attempts in four career games against Bill Belichick and the Patriots is Zach Wilson, 693 yards, two touchdowns, seven interceptions, 11 sacks en route to the Jets, an 0-4 record in all four of those games. So there is definitely a penchant for Zach to make mistakes against the Bill Belichick defense, whether they're self-inflicted or whether they're inflicted by Bill is kind of, I think, what we're going to see this week. But I'm going to turn back over and go homer on this one, and I'm going to say Ramondre Stevenson. And I think the New England Patriots absolutely have to try to get the running game going. Now, this is not an easy front to run against, but they have to try to do that. That means trying to push back guys like Quentin Williams, Quentin Jefferson, C.J. Mosley, Quincy Williams. This is not an easy front to run against, but if the Patriots are going to try to do that, they need to get consistent run blocking and they need to get good pass protection, good solid protection from the interior. That's going to allow guys like Trent Brown and potentially Calvin Anderson or City So on the other side, seal those edges and allow Mac Jones to be able to go to work. But if Ramondre is able to get a couple of catch and runs and able to run off a couple of big runs, it's going to make that much easier for the New England Patriots. Excellent choice, Mike. Ramondre Stevenson played a key role last year when these teams met, especially the game at MetLife Stadium. So there you have it. You're acquainted with the Jets and the Patriots. You've heard what's going on with each team. We've given you the key matchups, the key players to watch. Who's going to win now? Will the Jets get their first victory over the Patriots since 2015, or will New England's dominance over the Jets continue? You'll find out as we continue this Thursday crossover edition of Locked On Jets and Locked On Patriots. Our episode today is brought to you by Bird Dogs. Bird Dogs make you look good. So if you're a good-looking guy like Mike, Bird Dogs will make you look even better. If you're a not-so-great-looking guy like me, Bird Dogs will make you, still make you look pretty good. Bird Dogs stretch khaki shorts are designed to fit slimmer through the thigh and leg, giving you a truly sculpted look. These shorts do the exact same thing as Lululemon, but they fit way better. And they do that because regular shorts are made of a strif, uh, stiff, restricting cotton. Bird Dogs fix this issue by inventing cloud knit fabric that makes it look just like khaki, but stretches so you get a way slimmer fit without having to sacrifice movement. And Bird Dogs uses anti-stick sweat wicking fabric that keeps you cool and dry all day long. Bird Dogs are functional for any occasion. Going out to play golf. You know, it's still it's still the autumn, so there's still you still have some time left to go golfing. The, the date, an evening out, you know, it's still maybe warm enough to go to the pool this weekend. You can go work out, you can lounge, you can do whatever you want. Go to birddogs.com slash locked on NFL or enter promo code locked on NFL at checkout for a free bird dogs water bottle with your order. That's birddogs.com slash locked on NFL for a free water bottle at checkout. You won't want to take your bird dogs off. We promise you. It's crossover Thursday here on the Locked On Podcast Network. AFC East action this Sunday. Jets and Patriots, the two division rivals going at it once again. MetLife Stadium, 1 o'clock Eastern. A rare 1 o'clock Eastern start for the Jets this season. It's their their first uh, first of 2023, and it's going to be their last for a while. Jets have had a run of futility against the New England Patriots. Patriots have had a run of dominance against the Jets. Although you could argue that the Patriots' run of don- dominance against the Jets has lasted more than two decades. It's prediction time. Mike, tell us what you think is going to happen in this game. Well, if the New England Patriots are going to hope to be competitive and give themselves a chance to win in this game, one of the things that they have to do is establish the run on offense, but they have to be able to control the run on defense. And I think that is the ultimate key to New England trying to remain competitive and hopefully win this game for Patriots fans. 
The Pats have done a sort of up and down job of doing that in the first two games. They did a very good job of keeping Philadelphia's run game in check. Not so good when it came to the Miami Dolphins. The Patriots right now rank 23rd in the league in rushing yards allowed and 20th in rushing yards per play. Now, those numbers are a bit deceptive because Miami did most of that damage. And the reason that Miami was so productive against the run, or I should say so productive in running the football against the Patriots, is because the Patriots started off using a lighter front. They had that three-safety umbrella in the middle of the field to help contain their explosive offense. They didn't want guys like Tyree Kill beating them with big plays. That left them vulnerable up front. This week against the Jets, I think their focus completely shifts. It might do it even a 180. They definitely want to try to contain Brees Hall. They want to contain Dalvin Cook. The defensive game plan, I think, is going to include devoting extra bodies into that area rather than take them away and trying to keep the Jets running game from gaining any traction. If they do that, it allows the Patriots to put the ball back in the hands of Zach Wilson and give Zach a chance to do something he's yet to do, and that is beat a Bill Belichick defense. Wilson, I think, has looked better, and I think he is a better quarterback this year than he was last year and in previous years. So that's going to be a little bit of a risk for New England, but I still think it's their best bet. They need very good performances from Devon Godchow, Lawrence Guy, Christian Barmore, Keon White, and Dietrich Wise. That's a good unit when they're playing on all cylinders. They didn't do it on Sunday against Miami. They need to do it on Sunday against New York. And, Mike, I think on the Jets' side, uh, a couple things come to mind. Number one is I'm expecting a bounce back performance from this defense. The defense got lit up by the Dallas Cowboys. It was not a good performance by what is a very good defense. It was one of the top five defenses in the NFL last season. And I'm not sure they're necessarily going to finish in the top five again, but they're far better than what they showed against Dallas, where they let the Cowboys take the opening kick down the field, 12 plays for a touchdown, and the Jets were chasing the game the entire time. I think this unit's going to come out and play better in this one. I think the Jets will have a better game plan on offense than they did against Dallas. Uh, Nathaniel Hackett drug a lot of criticism, and I think deservedly so. I've talked about some of my anxieties with how he's going to approach this New England pass rush, but one thing that I think is pretty likely to happen is Brees Hall is going to get more than four carries in this game. Mm -hmm. The Jets are bringing Brees Hall back slowly, but they're not bringing him back so slowly that he should get four carries in the game. Hall kind of complained about it after the game to the media. He actually tweeted or X'd out, for football emojis, which, you know, sometimes these players will send out cryptic social media <laughs> posts. I think right after you complain about only getting four carries and you tweet out four football emojis, it's yeah. pretty clear. A little subtle. Talk- yeah, <laughs> it's pretty clear what you're talking about there. Yeah. I think he's going to get more than four carries. And, I mean, he's a big play waiting to happen. He's, mm-hmm. uh, you know, he's the one, ba- one of the few backs in the league where you don't have to block things well for him. He can still rip off a big run. So I think that that's uh, something you look at. But, you know, I've talked about Zach Wilson a lot. Uh, a lot of this has come back to Zach Wilson. And I actually think I think about something Sauce Gardner said, the Jets' star corner. It was talking about the New England offense, but I think this is actually a good breakdown of New England as a whole in the Belichick era. And he was talking about their offense, and he said, you know, it's not necessarily the most complex offense in the world. They're just coached really well, and they execute really well. And above all else, they don't beat themselves. And that's mm-hmm. been true for the last 22 years where mm-hmm. – you know, Jets. I always hear Jets fans say, "Why don't? Why doesn't New England ever lose a close game?" Well, it's because they never make the big. I mean, I get, you, you know, you know, occasionally every team makes a big mistake in a big spot. I mean, you know, the game in Vegas last year, which I'm sure you don't want to hear about, Mike. But um, that's that's a that's an anomaly. You know, the Patriots never are the team that makes the big mistake. You have to go out and beat the Patriots because the Patriots are not going to beat themselves. So the Jets, I think. I think in this game, probably above all others, others, the Jets have to avoid the big mistakes because, as I mentioned, the last two years, Zach Wilson's made the big mistake, and that's been right. the difference in the game. And that's, you know, I think sometimes you, you, when you say something like that, you're, it sounds like you're being disrespectful for the opponent. But when I say that, I'm being respectful for the Patriots because mm, the Patriots, cool. Patriots, like they're if you if you if the game comes down to a big mistake, it's going to be the, the other team that makes it. The Patriots right. are a well coached team. And they always, you know, they're always going to be sound. So if you, and they just kind of wait for you to make the mistake. And that's how they win a lot of games. Mm, absolutely. Without any question. And would you like to offer a score prediction today for uh, the outcome on Sunday in East Rutherford? Well, maybe this is wishful thinking. Maybe this is me being a homer. Although I did pick against the Jets last weekend. I picked for a closer game than they got, but I do think the Jets will win this game. I think that they'll finally break this long losing streak that they have against the Patriots. 
I like the way this defense is going to respond. I, I think that this defense is kind of built to contain the New England offense. I think that, you know, new, as Sauce Gardner said, this is not necessarily the most explosive offense in the league. They're very well coached. They execute at a high level. But I think this is the type of offense the Jets defense is built to kind of slow down. I think on the other side of the ball, you'll see a relatively conservative game plan. I worry about Zach Wilson. I think if Zach Wilson can play turnover free football, the Jets are going to have a really good chance at winning this game. I think, you know, so it's, I think it's kind of a coin flip game. These are two tough teams. I think these are two, these teams may be combined for a one in three record. I think these are both really solid football teams. I mean, look at the opponents they've played so far. Can you have a tougher schedule than these two teams through the first two weeks? Mm, Patriots getting it. Philadelphia and my, and Miami Jets getting Buffalo and Dallas. I think these are, these are two quality football teams that will be in the playoff race. I think the Jets will still be in the playoff race near the end of the season, even without Aaron Rodgers. I think the Patriots will be right there. I think that the Jets figure out a way. I think Zach Wilson finally avoids the big mistake. So I'll take the Jets 17, the Patriots 14. I think it's going to be a low-scoring game. I'll definitely take the under on on that. I think the Jets, Jets eke one out at home. <laughs> Folks, this is the fourth year that John and I have been doing crossovers together. You can tell we think alike and share half of the same brain. I also have this game going 17-14 because I do think it's going to be a defensive slugfest. I'm going to pull out the homer card on this one and say the New England Patriots pull this out. And the reason I do believe that is because I think the Patriots are going to win the turnover battle this week. And I think that's going to be key for them. New England knows that their backs are up against the wall. They're going to have a very difficult time against this defense, especially in that secondary like Sauce. Gardner and DJ Reed are going to really make things difficult on the Patriots pass catchers, especially deep. So it's going to be imperative for the Patriots to win the short game battle. I think they do it. And I think they pull this one out 17, 14, but like you said, John, this is a coin flip. It would not shock me to see it go the other way. The jets have an extremely talented team. Aaron Rodgers or no Aaron Rodgers. This is still a formidable matchup for the new England Patriots and one they have to be very, very careful for because the jets can take it to you in so many different ways. And interestingly, both of these teams, we were going to see a lot of punts on Sunday. Both of these teams <laughs> in the last two years have won a game on a punt return touchdown. Now, they not have. such a pleasant memory for the Jets because it happened when these two teams met last year. But week one, the Jets won in the, on the Xavier Gibson punt return touchdown. So special teams could, could be an X factor in this one, Mike, as it always is when these teams meet. Absolutely. Just ask Brendan Schooler how important special teams were. The only reason why Patriots fans have any smiles this week is because of that move around the edge to be able to block Jason Sanders' field goal attempt last week. Uh, the Patriots always have a wrinkle up their sleeve when it comes to special teams, and the Jets are very well coached in that area as well. Great X Factor, John. Well, Mike, it's always great talking with you. I can't wait to do it again later in the season. Jets fans, check out Locked On Jets tomorrow. We'll talk plenty more about this week three matchup. Patriots fans go to check out Mike's show locked on Patriots. He always gives great analysis ahead of ahead of games between the Patriots and the Jets and Jets fans head over to Mike's show as well. We'll hear from the other side <laughs> until then though, have a great Thursday, everybody. And we'll be back tomorrow to talk more AFC East football.